My approach with photography from the beginning when I really had made a decision to use photography as a first order medium for my own artwork was, I would say, photography itself. And what we might call the subjects were a secondary thing. I began to examine in turn all the basic physical and chemical attributes of photography, which are entailed in the production of a picture, and try and force photography to break from its own conventions. So, for example, there's a work made in 1970 called 60 Seconds of Light, and in that work, which says, in effect, what is photography? It is, in part at least, a combination of time and light. They're essential ingredients. So the subject is a photographer's darkroom clock. It has a black face and it has a white second hand. And as it moves, it's reflecting white light because it is painted white. And because the background is black, the trace of the white motion remains on the negative. This is what happens through the 12 pictures, and this segment of white becomes progressively larger. So the whole work becomes very reflexive. It informs upon itself and makes very clear the means of its own production. Following that, I began to make some triptychs which were related to the way one chooses to focus the camera. And the first way of doing this was by deciding that conventionally in photography, you could say there are three picture spaces. Within a field of view, we normally make a division between foreground, midground, background. And I started to focus in turn on the foreground elements, the midground elements, and the background elements, and to use a very, very shallow depth of focus so that each of these pictures was in focus, then it went out of focus, then it came back in focus again, finally, in the background. So y you were still able to compare and contrast because all those things are present simultaneously. Photography's uh, history is clearly one of providing evidence in a very efficient and believable way. There is always photography doing its conventional and historical job of objectively recording things, but at the same time recording them through a set of fictional devices. Black and white photography, after all, is entirely fictive. It doesn't correspond with the way we actually see the world. I don't really believe in uh, absolute objectivity, and what interests me in part at least, is to open up a set of alternatives, even though you could say very often, in fact always, first of all, my photographs are constructed. There are fictional scenarios.
The way I work is usually following a similar pattern. So I'm never seen wandering around with a camera. I simply don't work like that. I start by sitting at a table with paper, pen, and I use an old manual typewriter, not a computer. I'm trying to make diagrams, drawings, uh, little bits of writing to make a form of script for what I do. It's also a way of convincing myself of the plausibility of the scenarios I'm proposing. So there's a mixture of a kind of introduced fiction and a form of documentary realism, actually, mixed up together. What I'm calling documentary is part of what gives the final images some of their credence, and it's also what ties them to a history of photographic use. When I'm shooting pictures for a finished piece of work, ordinarily I'm using a medium format camera, 6.6, six, 6.7. A lot of my finished works are relatively large, a format of around 4 foot by 5 or 130 by 160 centimetres, that kind of size. I'm not only interested in the image that's provided, I am interested in the objective presence of the work itself. As a physical presence, there's still something to confront, something to contend with. If you started to make a list of photography's conventions, you'd have to include a sense of apparent transparency of the photograph itself. you're being given an illusion of some other time, some other place. And one of the ways of breaking this transparency and this illusionism, and also figuration, because that's another predominant mode of the photographic, is to construct a kind of screen as part of the completed image, which deliberately obstructs the viewer, from entering the very space they would like to enter with the eye and with the mind. And what they're confronted with within that territory, which is usually the larger and more central part of the image, is an opacity rather than a transparency. In making Backdrop in 2001, I was really interested, and still am interested, in the use of the monochrome. The grey is provided by a standard roll of photographer's backdrop paper, in this case, a mid-grey. Now, ordinarily, your point of view would be from the front side of that backdrop, photographing whatever it is that's placed in front of it. My point of view, in this case, is from the rear. Now, what is the centre of the real photographer's attention and what's clearly the object of the attention of the surrounding models, we don't know. I did two things. I said to the photographers that they might also take their own pictures. 
The second thing is that instead of having nobody or nothing behind that backdrop, I had somebody. And the somebody is there, in fact, telling jokes in order to get the attention of the surrounding figures and in order to induce a real response. When I got the film processed afterwards in order to select the finished picture that I wanted to use, it's number 11 on the contact sheet, I also had the film processed by the real photographers. Of course, I'm in these pictures because they're in mine. So I'm lurking to one side in the shadows with my own camera. And that formula you could apply to a number of my works is a depositioning, a displacement of center and periphery, of the opaque, the transparent, of the figurative, of the abstract, and very often also of the monochrome and something in full color. I use words like obstruct, rupture, censor. I think it's a catalogue of words which is quite confrontational. And I mean to confront the spectator's uh, received ideas of how to approach pictures. And I mean to contest the picture's own conventions of recording and transmitting information. It's part of my character, I think, that I always need to be asking why. You know, why should it be like this? Why could it not be like that? It's that kind of um, position, I think, that I have.